Dr. Gay, at Harvard, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Harvard's rules of bullying and harassment, yes or no? It can be, depending on the context. It can be dependent. When is genocide in a context where it's okay? That woman is still at Harvard, not just as a tenured professor, but as the president of that institution. Can anything be done to save these colleges? Let's ask two people who may have some ideas. Graduate student from Harvard, Shabos Kastenbaum, and law professor, expert on the Middle East, Professor Thane Rosenbaum. Welcome, gentlemen, to Greg Kelly Reports. Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you. So I have a good friend. Uh, he calls himself a gonzo journalist. I call him a guerrilla videographer. His name is Armie Horowitz. And he's been producing amazing videos on U.S. campuses for, I don't know, more than a decade. His latest one, just posted, was filmed on the campus of the State University of San Francisco. And he pretends to be a supporter of Hamas raising money to kill Jews around the world. Here's a little clip. We want to fund operations against soft targets. Uh, schools, hospitals, Jewish cafes. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. we have to strike back. Yeah. A lot of people think they're superior to others, you know what I mean? So they think, think they're superior. Yeah, a lot of them think that. Right? Jew premacy. I think their behavior and the actions are evil. It says they want the land. It's a money thing. How much money would you be able to do? It's tax deductible. A couple of bucks. Like five. Also five. Like five bucks. Five bucks. 20 bucks. I did 20. 20 bucks. Or 30. That'd be amazing. Those are American students on U.S. campuses giving cash money to somebody who says, I want to fund attacks on Jews around the world. Uh, Shabos, I imagine you are not surprised at that video from my friend Ami Horowitz. Unfortunately, I'm not surprised. Uh, for the past three months, I've been walking past fellow classmates, those who I sit in classrooms with and learn from, who call for the globalization of the Intifada, those who have said that the rape and abduction of Jewish women is a hoax, those who publicly supported Hamas. So it's not a surprise at all. Look, in 2016, 71% of U.S. high schoolers were planning on enrolling in college. Today, just seven years later, that number is now 62%. Harvard alone saw 17% drop in applications. And it's because, unlike many of my classmates, the American electorate think critically about issues, and they realize that they don't want to be part of these environments of indoctrination, and as we've seen since October 7th, these environments of hate. My family were Holocaust yeah. survivors. They escaped Kristallnacht. They know what happens when institutions and universities uh, go against the Jews, and we have to put a stop to it, and we have to stand up and declare that this moral rot is unacceptable. Yeah. But Professor Rosenbaum, I, I attended Harvard back in the 90s. I had a two-year fellowship. I couldn't get out of there fast enough. It was already woke back then. What, what do we do? I mean, we have this letter or this op-ed in the Washington Post yesterday saying that uh, President Gay must resign, but it's not to do with her hatred of the Jews. And I, it, it's not anti-Semitism. That's politically correct. It is Jew hatred. It's about her plagiarism. I don't care about her plagiarism. She is a racist. Can we fix any of this, Professor? I doubt so, Sebastian. You have to understand, humanities faculties, especially at Harvard, they run the school. Um, you know, the, we don't recognize how the presidents of these universities are terrified of the humanities department. And the humanities department are the majority of the professors that believe in woke protocols, dogma, orthodoxies, groupthink, interse inter intersectionality, intellectual conformity, and they're not going to let her go. <laughs> uh, remember, this is woman was the dean of the arts and sciences department. That means that she hired two-thirds of the faculty, and she hired them on the basis of diversity, equity, and inclusion criteria. That's why she's the president, because it provided equity. It's not based on meritocracy. It's not based on excellence. It's based on representation and identity. And I think to let her go is an acknowledgement for too many of the faculty members that they don't belong there. By the way, they don't belong there. They, yeah. too, were hired <laughs> under this really blanket criteria of not about excellence, not about uh, merit, but about do you fill a box? Do you achieve equity? 
do you represent your group or your identity? So I just think this is not just about a president, Sebastian. This is so much deeper. You're talking about two thirds of the faculty at all of these schools that believe this stuff. They believe that saying intifada, intifada to the face of a Jewish person is a free speech academic matter. They believe this stuff. This is not like they're, yes, they're anti-Semites, but it's deeper than that. If you're white, if, if you're a Zionist, you're guilty. And if something bad happens to you, I'll contribute $5 to get you killed. That's nothing. I know it sounds ridiculous, Shabbos. but those students, how casual they sounded, right? They were so casual. And it's because- no, that's I mean, it's well, shocking. White, it's like they're, well, they're, one of the students says, well, one of the students, you can watch it. I, I've reposted it at the top of my Twitter feed. One of the students says, I don't have a job right now, but I can give you $20 to kill Jews. <laughs> Last question to you, uh, Shabos. Um, uh, we've seen the marches uh, at Christmas. We've seen the protesters, you know, breach the fence of the White House in the name of Hamas and social justice. I have to ask you, do you feel safe as a Jew in America at, at a university campus? You know, I'm I'm 25 years old. I'm a proud American and a proud patriot. Um, I'm a first generation. My parents are immigrants. I love this country. And I unfortunately don't feel safe anymore. And I never would have thought that wow. not only would I be on this show, but that I would be expressing such sentiments. But I think the level of Jew hatred that we've seen in this country is so unfathomable. Um, the only comparison I can really make is 1930s Germany. And I know that that comparison shocks a lot of people, or unfortunately to a lot of my classmates, it doesn't actually mean much. But to me and a lot of other uh, Jewish friends and family I have, uh, these are serious, serious uh, and uh, dangerous times we're living in. And the first step is to have structural reforms. That obviously means someone like yeah. Claudine Gay, who enabled so much anti-Semitism, has to leave. And from there, we can begin a conversation on what we could do to create spaces where Jews don't have to feel that that they have to hide in classrooms and hide their yarmulke, uh, which unfortunately many of us are having to do in the United States today. In, in the meantime, if you're an alumnus of these institutions, don't give them a stinking penny. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Shabas. Next up, it's an